Hi everybody, Dr. A here. This immunohematology basics video is going to be about blood groups. So um, a large number of different antigens can be present on a person's red blood cells. Hundreds of known antigens have been organized into about 30 blood group systems. Um, some of the more common blood group systems are the ABO and RH, which everybody should be familiar with. But then there's also the P system, KID, MNS, Lewis, Kell, and Duffy. Those are the most well known. There's more than that. But if you are at least aware that uh, red cell antigens uh, can be really beyond just ABO and RH, um, this is a really good start. Okay, so all of the antigens present on a person's red cells, white cells, and platelets are inherited. They're inherited from mom and dad, right? So each antigen is controlled by a gene, and the gene, of course, is the unit of inheritance. So the allele are the variants of a gene for a particular trait. So uh, for our ABO blood groups, the alleles could be A, B, or O, okay? And since one gene is inherited from each parent, there are two alleles for each trait. So you get one from mom and one from dad, okay? The phenotype, uh, is determined by tests that are made directly on the red cells, so the blood typing test. So what we're looking is what did the genetics express and put on the surface of the red cells, and that's what we detect. So the phenotype is uh, always the expression of your genotype. And uh, so, yeah, we look what what showed up on the on the surface of the red cells. That's what we look for. And the genotype, the genotype is the actual total genetic pattern of a person. Uh, and so it's what they inherited from their mom and their dad. So um, the ABO blood groups, group system, we're going to start with it. It was first discovered and described in 1900 and 1901 by Carl Leinsteiner. Um, and he divided red cells into three groups, A, B, and O. The fourth group, AB, was discovered by two of Lundsteiner's pupils in 1902. So there are four phenotypes, right, for the ABO blood group system. You can be A, B, AB, and O. Those are the four ways that the genetics can be expressed as far as the ABO system is concerned. So in group A, what uh, has been expressed on the surface of the red cells is the A antigen. And group B, it's the B antigen that's present on the red cell surface, and group AB has both the A and the B antigens, and those are expressed on the surface of the red cells. And the group O has neither A or B antigens present on the red cell surface. They actually have the, the base, like the, the, the part that like goes into the surface of the red cell, but that is not antigenic, and so it has no antigen on the surface of the red cell. So then uh, the presence of that antigen on the red cells is determined by the genes on the chromosomes. Um, and there are three allelic genes that can be inherited in the ABO system. You can get the A gene from mom or dad, the B gene from mom or dad, and the O gene from mom or dad. And so each person has two genes for any trait. So again, you get one from mom, one from dad. And so the following combinations of alleles or genotypes are possible. So you can get AA, that would mean you would get, you got the A allele from mom and the A allele from dad. Or you can be AO, meaning you get the A allele from mom or dad, and then the B allele from mom or dad. So, I'm sorry, the O allele from mom and dad. So sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. You can be BB or BO. You could be AB and you can be OO. So those are all the possible combinations. The way then that correlates to the phenotypes is AA and AO are both expressed as A, okay? And BB and BO are both expressed as B. So you can't tell the difference in the genotype between an AA and an AO just by looking at the phenotype, okay? And then AB, the phenotype, is AB and then OO, the phenotype is O. And so this means that, for example, um, 
if you have a mom and dad that are both uh, phenotype A and they're both AO, they could feasibly each pass on an O allele to an offspring and have a type O child. Okay, so this is how you can have some variety in the blood types um, of the children and uh, the parents. So Lonsteiner's rule says if the A or B antigen is not present on the surface of red cell, then the corresponding antibody will be found in the serum. And this is for exclusively for the ABO system that that always holds true, that these antibodies get developed like in that first year of life, like soon after birth, you start developing these antibodies. And as your immune system, developing immune system as an infant is taking inventory of self and foreign and all of that, it sees like, for example, that the baby has A antigens on the surface of red cells, but doesn't have B antigens, it will make anti-B antibodies. Okay, and um, so, um, and it makes anti-B antibodies because the baby doesn't have B antigens uh, on their red cells. So, uh, for example, a person that does not have the A antigen on the surface of their red cells will have anti-A antibody in their plasma or serum also. So again, this is only in the ABO system. And all the other systems, uh, in order for you to have, or the person to have, an antibody present, they must have been exposed to that antigen and the production of the antibody triggered by exposure. Okay. So in the, in the ABO blood group, if you are type A, you will have anti-B. If you are type B, you will have anti-A. If you are type O, you're going to have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies because you don't have any antigens um, and any at least A or B antigens on the surface of your red cells. And if you are type AB, you will not have any antibody, at least not any ABO antibodies in the serum. So next we're going to talk about the RH blood group system, because that is the next most popular, most common blood system. Um, and it's the most complex red cell antigen system. It has over 50 defined antigens and 150 possible variations of these two genes that control the RH system. So the, the one we're going to focus on, the most imp important one in the RH system is the D antigen. And so uh, whether a person has or doesn't have the G D antigen will determine if the person's red cells are RH positive or RH negative. So if they are RH positive, they have the D antigen. If they're RH negative, they do not have the D antigen. Okay, and so then you combine that with the ABO antigens, and now you have eight possible blood groups. You can be A positive or A negative, B positive or B negative, AB positive or AB negative, O positive or O negative. So the following rules should be kept in mind when you select blood to be transfused to patients for the RH blood group system. So RH negative patients can only receive blood from RH negative donors, okay? This is because if you give RH positive blood to an RH negative patient, since they don't have the RH antigen or the D antigen, they can develop antibodies to the RH antigens. So uh, you want to prevent that from happening, so you just give them RH negative blood. RH positive patients, because they have the D antigen on the surface of their red cells and therefore never have the antibody, um, the anti-D antibody, then they can get blood from RH positive or RH negative donors. So um, this table sums up the uh, compatibility between recipient and donor. So um, here on this axis, you have the rece receiving uh, people. So uh, the recipient, the patients getting the blood, and in here are your donors. Okay, so first let's start with this line that goes across here like that. So obviously, um, same blood type can match same blood type, no problem, right? So an A positive patient can get A positive blood. An A negative patient can get A negative blood. B positive can get B positive, B negative, B negative, and all the way down the line here. Okay, but then uh, the, the problem starts when, if for some reason or another, you need to give them blood that's outside 
of their match blood type, what can they get? Okay, so if the recipient is A positive, obviously they can get A positive blood, but they can also get A negative blood. Uh, because they are Rh positive, that means they can get Rh positive and Rh negative blood. Um, they are blood group A, which means they will have anti B, which means then they cannot get any of the B types or AB type. Okay, so all of those are ruled out. This was completely blank here. Uh, but they could get O pos or O neg uh, because they are Rh positive and O. Blood group O does not have any antigens on the surface of the cells for the patient's anti B antibodies to react to, so that's completely safe. Okay, so an A positive patient could get A pos, A neg, O pos, O neg. Okay, so then if we go to an RH negative, um, so A negative patient, then they can only get RH negative blood, so then that leaves them with. A negative and O negative because remember an RH negative person has the potential of having the anti-RH or anti-D antibody that means you cannot give them any RH positive blood so that rules out all the RH positive blood and here with them being A they would have anti-B so you definitely can't give them B or AB. Okay so for the same RH positive RH negative rules apply all the way down so for B type um, you can obviously give them what's my question here go for B type, you can obviously give them B blood, um, and so B positive is going to get B positive or B negative, and B negative will get B negative, but you can also give them O, um, O positive or negative for B pos recipient, and only O negative for the B neg recipient, okay? So remember, a patient that's ABO type B will have anti-A antibodies, that is why you cannot give them type A or type AB. If a person is AB positive, um, they can get antibodies blood, which is really cool. So they are considered a universal recipient. This is because they have the A antigen, the B antigen, and the RH or the D antigen, which means that they don't have anti-A, they don't have anti-B, they don't have anti-D, meaning they won't react with any of the other ABO and RH system, uh, or, well, Anti the D antigens, and so you can give them any of the ABO RH types without having any kind of risk of uh, reaction. And then, uh, same for the, if they're AB negative, then you just take away the RH positive blood, so then you can give them A neg, B neg, AB neg, O neg. Now, for O positives, because um, type O will have anti-A and anti-B antibodies, you cannot give them A, you cannot give them B, you cannot give them AB, you can only give them type O. So RH positive would be able to get RH positive and RH negative O blood, but O negative can only ever receive O negative blood because an O negative patient has the potential of, uh, of having anti-D and they have anti-A and anti-B. So they have all the, the ABORH antibodies, so they could react with any of them except their own um, O negative. And so, um, o negative, as you see, it has check marks all the way down. Because O negative has no A, no B, and no RH antigens on the surface of the red cells for the donors, then it can actually safely be given to any of the blood types, and therefore O negative is going to be your universal donor. So let's recap the universal donor and recipient. Um, concepts. So they are terms that are used usually in regard to the emergency transfusion of blood. Although one should always strive to give a patient type specific blood, so the patient's blood type. So it actually doesn't take that long to perform a blood typing on a specimen. And so if it is at all possible, even if it's a, you know, a, a grave situation, if we can get a quick blood type and give them type specific it is way better for the management of the blood supply. But if not, then uh, O negative blood can be reserved for trauma patients. Um, so the universal donor is O negative. Uh, so because this uh, group O blood first can be safely transfused into a patient of any ABO groups. So they can give, be given to A, B, AB, or O type. And um, the R, the, it's RH negative. Uh, and so that means it has no D antigen. So no A, no B, no D, there's nothing for the antibodies to react to, even if the, all those antibodies are present. Um, 
And so it's just completely unreactive as far as ABORH antibodies are concerned. And so uh, we can give, without knowing what the patient's blood type is, we can give them some ONA blood in case of a trauma. And of course, then the universal recipient, as we saw, was group ABRH positive. So uh, a patient that has ABRH positive can receive blood from any blood type because they don't have any anti-A, they don't have any anti-B, and they don't have any anti-D antibodies. So this little graphic kind of recaps it. O can be given to A, B, and AB. And AB can receive A, O, and B, and of course, AB. I am going to give you a twist here uh, because this is important to know also. So if we are transfusing fresh frozen plasma, then we have to think in a different way as we think when we're transfusing the packed red cells. Okay. So um, we saw when you, in the first video, when you donate blood, you can have the packed red cell unit and then you can have a fresh frozen plasma unit off of that whole blood. What is in fresh frozen plasma? It's the liquid portion of blood. It has a lot of proteins and clotting factors and things, but some of the things that are in there are the antibodies. So the ABO and RH antibodies from the donor are present in the fresh frozen plasma. So you're essentially infusing antibodies into the patient um, and you just don't want to cause a reaction. And so, um, Obviously, again, when donating and receiving, uh, you can match types. So A pause can get A pause, A neg can get A neg, B pause gets B pause, B neg gets B neg, A B pause gets A B pause, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. Okay. Now let's think about it this way, because now it's going to be completely backwards from the other table we looked at. If a, um, patient is A positive, they can only get A positive and AB positive fresh frozen plasma. Okay, so let's look, first look at the RH uh, situation. So if um, there are A positive, if a patient um, is a donor, I'm sorry, if a donor is A positive, uh, they won't have any anti-D because they're A positive. So that's safe to give to another RH positive because there's no antibody to react. But if a donor is A negative, there is a potential that they could have anti-D antibody in that plasma. And if you give it to an RH positive patient, you will cause a reaction. So when we're talking about fresh frozen plasma, RH positive can only get RH positive, but RH negative could get RH positive and RH negative. So again, it's backwards. Why is that? Is because an a negative patient, the cells uh, in the A ne negative patients do not have the anti-D antigen. And so uh, there's not going to be any anti-D in A positive fresh frozen plasma, but there could be an anti-D in the A negative plasma, but it doesn't have the antigen to react to. The recipient doesn't have the antigen to react to it, so, so it's safe. Okay, so that's why it's backwards. Okay, so again, for type... Um, B, um, you, you know, can match B pause to B pause, and um, B neg can get B pause and B neg fresh frozen plasma. And it's because um, a, a B person has the B antigens, and if you gave them A fresh frozen plasma, the type A would have anti B uh, antibodies, and that would react to the, the B antigens antigens present on the donor, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so for both A and B, why would we not give them O or O neg? It's because O is going to have anti-A and anti-B antibodies in that unit of fresh frozen plasma, so they will react with anything that has A and B. So you cannot give them to type A, you cannot give them to type B, you can't give them to type AB because you can cause a reaction. Okay, so then here we see that AB positive could be given to anybody, and that's because when you uh, are infusing fresh frozen plasma from an AB positive person, there is going to be no anti-A, no anti-B, and no anti-D. So there's not going to be any AB or RH antibody, so you literally can give AB positive pl fresh frozen plasma to anyone, any blood type, and it will be just fine. And so, uh, because it just lacks antibodies. And so, again, here, the um, uh, 
the Rh positive can, um, people can only get the Rh positive plasma, uh, the Rh negative can get Rh positive and Rh negative plasma. Uh, because again, the Rh negative plasma has the potential of having anti D, so you cannot give it to the Rh positive uh, recipients. And so, um, in this case here, the uh, universal recipient is going to be O negative because you can infuse them with anti A, anti B, anti D, and there's not going to be any reactions because there's no antibody, uh, there's no antigens on the surface of an O negative cell. So, there you go. That wraps up our blood group video. Thanks.